are reaching out to you with a special edition of In Conversation with Hirishi on Daily Mirror. Firstly, I would like to thank our amazing venue partner, Elegance, and also our beauty partner, Anthias. Today, we have with us a special guest representing a government entity that overcame different types of hurdles to contribute to Sri Lanka's economy. And it is something of sweetness that comes into the equation, that comes into the conversation many times. So today we have with us the chairman of Lanka Sugar Company, uh, Mr. Janaka Nimala Chandra. Thank you so much for joining Thank with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, there's a lot to talk about actually when it comes to uh, the Lanka Sugar Company, the overview of the services you've done, and also you know um, overcoming different hurdles in the year 2020, especially with the issues pertaining to COVID-19 and so on. So before we go into all of that, let's start the discussion by actually giving an overview of what Lanka Sugar Company is. Lanka Sugar Company is a 100% government-owned company. Uh, it was established in 2011 when then the president, uh, Mahindra Raj Baksha, uh, took over uh, underutilized and uh, underperforming entities, government entities, uh, private entities under government uh, uh, management. But, however, this uh, Lanka Sugar Company owns two factories, one at Sevanakal and one is at uh, Palwatta. These two operated separately for the past, I mean, it's been about 35 years they've established. Um, so since 2011, it has been under the government purview. Uh, last five years before this government came over, uh, it was under a different management. but. Uh, the, the company has been not making profits. Not only that, uh, it was not making profits. Also, the farmers were moving out from sugarcane farming. Uh, the, uh, there's a, there was a big, highly demotivated staff. We have a staff strength of about two, um, 6,000. Um, around 1,500 at uh, Sevenegal and about 4,500 at Palwatta. So there were a lot of issues. Uh, people were not uh, given salary increments. Uh, farmers were not given water, what they want for farming. So, but I mean, um, we've, we've done quite a lot of work uh, during the past year. Uh, and we have come to a stage where that we can take it to the next level. Definitely. And uh, how do you see the importance of the sugar industry in Sri Lanka? Because we do have numerous industries uh, contributing on a local platform. How do you see what's I think, your perspective? I think any government institution uh, is uh, very important to the economy because it directly uh, connected to government's income or the expenditure. What happens is, unfortunately, when you talk about a government enterprise, uh, state-owned enterprise, uh, we always talk about loss-making in uh, enterprises. As long as they make profits, um, it can contribute to government's efforts um, and the goals. Uh, and in my case, sugar plays a big role, whatever we do, because um, after crude oil, I think we spend most of most amount of money for an exchange on sugar imports. And in Sri Lanka, we produce about 10% of the national requirement. Uh, which is very minimum uh, for a country who has done well in agriculture. So there's a lot of work to be done, but I think um, um, with the plans we have set in place, we'll be able to take it to a, a better place in another couple of years. So as we know, amidst the global pandemic, there were so many institutions that were going through numerous challenges, especially in the year 2020. And amidst this situation, uh, Lanka Sugar Company, becomes uh, one of the most profitable government institutions in year 2020. I would like for you to elaborate on that. Yeah, we, we were one of the very few companies, uh, state-owned enterprises, who made profits last year. Uh, encouragingly, though, there were a few more who made profits, uh, which, is, which is good compared to previous years. Um, the key reason why we were able to make profits um, why, how we were able to make such a big turnaround was due to the decision government took on uh, ethanol imports. 
the government took a decision to ban ethanol imports. Hence, uh, we produced ethanol, which is required for countries, uh, alcohol and other production, 100% locally. Through that, we were able to go for this kind of a profit. Also, some of the things we did internally, uh, bearing in mind the cost elements, uh, look, micromanaging some of the cost elements which goes in for production and other. When you talk about, you know, state-owned enterprises, a lot of waste, a lot of um, unnecessary costs are there. So we managed to balance things up and with the help of the price we got, uh, I have to mention uh, Honorable State Minister Janaka Bakkumra's contribution to this because he's someone who stood by the decision and who actually uh, with uh, Honorable Ramesh Patirana who went and told the President that look, uh, we have enough ethanol. It's just that we haven't got a price, good price in the local market, but we are importing, uh, spending a lot of uh, foreign exchange. Um, so uh, that really helped for us to turn things around. Thereby, we were managed to give a lot of benefits to the workers as well as the farmers who are, who are uh, working with us. What's next on the roadmap? Because I feel, I mean, it's, it's an, it's natural to think that sugar, the sugar industry has massive potential locally and even globally. So in terms of enhancing production, in terms of upgrading strategy, what's next? Well, um, before getting to that, I would uh, look at things, some of the other things which we did um, previously, last year, looking at the future. We cultivated 10,000 acres of land that is targeting this year. Previous year when we took over, uh, we had to anyway manage with what was grown the previous year, the year before. So we were on a massive drive towards cultivating more lands, getting our product, uh, which is sugar cane, ready for, uh, for to, to make sugar. So 10,000 acres of land we cultivated in Palawat and Sevanagala. Thereby, we have created about 1,000 new jobs. Plus, we not only gave farmer benefits, we also gave a lot of benefits for our workers because, like I said, they were uh, very demotivated, demoralized. Um, there had been like four to five chairmen within the past five or six years. So, management was not uh, stable. So was the political situation in the country. So we needed to fix that. Uh, we were probably the only state-owned enterprise who, or oh, even when you compare the private sector, who increased the staff salary twice within the calendar year. We were able to give the cost of living allowance, which was um, uh, not given to them for about seven years. Uh, plus, we were able to give them bonuses uh, just to get them going because we knew that the next couple of years we needed to have a strong workforce who's going to be um, willing to take up the challenge. So we did that. Also, we did a lot of uh, modifications. We, had a, we spent a lot of money on uh, the factories, the two factories. We have invested a lot of money in uh, improving the quality of the facilities. But when you look at this year, uh, we are geared already to produce more sugar, thereby uh, help the government. And you mentioned that we were one of the companies who made the highest amount of profits in the government sector. We actually made 1.36 billion rupees and this year we target to push it to 2 billion. And instead of taking money from the government to run our companies, we want to give money back to the treasury. Also, we have uh, planned to build more um, uh, reservoirs like small water tanks. Uh, we, are, we have planned to spend about 400 million on water uh, projects another 600 million on uh, company uh, 
uh, factory impro improvements and also at Sevenagala for the past 35 years there have been talks about second phase uh, to increase productivity that we are starting this year so stage two of Sevenagala uh, unit will see light after 35 years uh, this year we have done everything and the government has uh, given us 500 million from the budget uh, Honorable Prime Minister allocated that money for uh, Seven Acre Sugar Factory. Also, we, tend, uh, we, we plan to buy whatever the machinery and uh, agricultural uh, vehicles required for farming and cultivation. So with all that, and also we are planning on improving our ethanol quality and the quantity of ethanol we produce because there's a bit of a deficit uh, with the demand and supply. So we are trying to bridge that. Um, next few years, uh, if I add a little more, uh, we plan to start another sugar factory on Lanka Sugar. That'll come within the next two to three years time. And uh, the idea is to make it a, uh, in three years time, three or four years time, to make it a four to five billion profit-making entity. I would like to know from your personal view, how is it working in the private sector and in the government sector? Because we see there are so many countries around the world that actually merges the two. There are so many economies where the government and the private sectors work together very much hand in hand. So for someone who's transitioning, what's your experience like? Uh, it's, it's been new, it's been challenging because the kind of stakeholders we have in the government sector and the private sector tends to be different. You are dealing with trade unions, you are dealing with um, farmers, farmer uh, societies, uh, different, different, uh, you, you have to deal with the village temple, the school, then the politicians who, are, who have various interests in these uh, institutions. So the, it, is, it was challenging. But uh, it, it wasn't something I wasn't expecting because we all know. Uh, one thing uh, what I found um, quite fascinating is that it's just that uh, not that the people who work in the government sector are any less capable of doing things. It's just that the management and the guidance given to them sometimes has not been great. So hence you tend to get like a bit of a slow moving workforce and hence the production and the productivity of uh, the government sector. But um, yes, it, it was different, it is different, but um, two different uh, kind of challenges. Definitely. And Janaka, you know very well that when it comes to executing a successful business strategy, you know, paying attention to all the elements in the supply chain is important. When it comes to the farmers, this is the backbone of this entire operation. So in, during your work tenure through this institution, how are you planning on to improve compensating and treating them right? So what do you have in mind in terms of uh, giving, them, giving back to them? Well, very good question and uh, very correctly you put it, uh, they are the backbone of everything what we do. Uh, that's the very reason when we took over, we uh, made it a point to look at their grievances because we had a, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we had a community where, who were moving away from sugarcane cultivation because they were not getting the correct price, they were not given water, uh, irrigation facilities plus fertilize on time. So a uh, few things which we did when we came on board was we immediately increased their price what we pay for sugarcane metric ton. So we increased it by 10%. That was a big margin of increase when you compare what they have been getting. Uh, that was like after about seven years, they have got an increment. Also, we ensured uninterrupted supply of fertilizer and we came up with a lot of irrigation facilities. We built 30 tanks in the Monragal district, um, targeting Palvatta specifically. Uh, and through that, we were able to give what the, the basic needs, we could provide the basic needs through those. Plus, 
um, this year we have planned to give them a pension scheme which was not there in, for the sugar uh, cane farmers. So we are introducing a pension scheme for them. We have already written off 480 million debt which was uh, on 3,500 farmers. I think uh, releasing them from that debt was one of the biggest um, achievements we as a company uh, could achieve. And um, also we managed to uh, reduce their loan interest rate by 4%. It was 12% earlier, but we took the initiative to reduce it by 8%, thereby encourage them to cultivate more. That's how we were able to expand our uh, crop area by 10,000 acres within a 10 month, 11 month period during the past year. So there's a lot in store for them. We gave them bonuses for every metric ton of sugar cane they uh, supplied to us. And this year, we are planning to give them two bonuses within the year, one in April and in uh, December, because the profit which we made from, you know, through our operations last year, I think I strongly believe that benefit should go to that those poor farmers in that area who's actually making all this a reality. Yes, and also, also with this, I would like to, it's impressive actually, and um, also employees and staff, the other additional staff and entities that work under the company is also very, it's of paramount importance. So uh, what do you have in mind in terms of, you know, arranging uh, various compensations or, you know, doing justice to them? Well, um, see, government sector, again, like you asked in the very first question, um, we always talk about um, highly demotivated, not so productive set of people, but uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, if you look at the government salaries, some say that they are paid well, but I mean, um, coming from a private sector background, I know that they are paid peanuts. So first thing we did was, and that too, most of the employees who are in the government sector don't have a, a permanent employment. So they are all on contract or casual basis. They get their uh, tenure extended by a year just through a paper. If you don't get that, you're, you, there's no job security. So one of the things which we did after taking over was making 2,000 employees out of about 5,500 to 6,000 permanent employees and we gave them great promotions. I think closer to 1,000 people got their great promotions after about 15 years. And there were uh, employees who have worked for 27 years but not got a permanent employment, who received that permanent employment under our, uh, after we took over during the past one year. Also, we gave them uh, two salary increments, not one. Uh, probably the only company in the country across private and public sector to give the employees two salary increments. Plus, they also got the benefits of all our uh, profits. So they got the bonuses. This year, also, they are also getting two bonuses that's in store for them. And we are do, uh, doing a lot of work to make their work life uh, better by bringing in sports, bringing in leisure activities, uh, improving their quarters, uh, giving them more facilities. Um, because this, whatever we make, whatever the money we make from this should, uh, like you said, go back to those key stakeholders who are part of this. What's next um, on the roadmap? Because I feel, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's natural to think that sugar, the sugar industry has massive potential locally and even globally. So in terms of enhancing production, in terms of upgrading strategy, what's next? Well, um, before getting to that, I would uh, look at things, some of the other things which we did um, previous year, last year, looking at the future. We cultivated 10,000 acres of land that is targeting this year. Previous year, when we took over, uh, we had to anyway manage with what was grown the previous year, the year before. So we were on a massive drive towards cultivating more lands, getting our product 
uh, which is sugarcane, ready for crush, uh, for to to make sugar. So, 10,000 acres of land we cultivated in Palawan and Sevanagala. Thereby, we have created about 1,000 new jobs. Plus, we not only gave farmer benefits, we also gave a lot of benefits for our workers because, like I said, they were uh, very demotivated, demoralized. Um, they had been like four to five chairmen within the past five or six years. So management was not uh, stable. So was the political situation in the country. So we needed to fix that. Uh, we were probably the only state-owned enterprise who, oh, even when you compare the private sector, who increased the staff salary twice within the calendar year. We were able to give the cost of living allowance, which was um, uh, not given to them for about seven years. Uh, plus, we were able to give them bonuses uh, just to get them going because we knew that the next couple of years we needed to have a strong workforce who's going to be um, willing to take up the challenge. So we did that. Also, we did a lot of uh, modifications. We had a, we spent a lot of money on uh, the factories, the two factories. We have invested a lot of money in uh, improving the quality of the facilities. But when you look at this year, uh, we are geared already to produce more sugar, thereby uh, help the government and you mentioned that we were one of the companies who made the highest amount of profits in the government sector. We actually made 1.36 billion rupees and this year we target to push it to 2 billion. And instead of taking money from the government to run our companies, we want to give money back to the treasury. Also, we have uh, planned to build more um, uh, reservoirs like small water tanks. Uh, we, are, we have planned to spend about 400 million on water uh, projects, another 600 million on uh, company uh, factory imp improvements. And also at Sevenegala, for the past 35 years, there have been talks about second phase uh, to increase productivity. That we are starting this year. So. Stage two of Sevenagala uh, unit will see light after 35 years uh, this year. We have done everything, and the government has uh, given us 500 million from the budget. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister allocated that money for uh, Sevenagala Sugar Factory. Also, we, tend, uh, we, we plan to buy whatever the machinery and uh, agricultural uh, vehicles required for farming and cultivation. So with all that, and also we are planning on improving our ethanol quality and the quantity of ethanol we produce because there's a bit of a deficit uh, with the demand and supply. So we are trying to bridge that. Um, next few years, uh, if I add a little more, uh, we plan to start another sugar factory and Lanka Sugar that will come within the next two to three years time. And uh, the idea is to make it a, uh, in three years time, three or four years time, to make it a four to five billion profit making entity. All right. So we just have a glimpse of the roadmap as to what Lanka Sugar Company is going to be up to. So all the very best, Janaka. Thank you so much. And uh, we wish you all the very best. And uh, let's hope the government agencies will uh, keep making milestones in the future as well. Thank you.